Senior Life Journeys presents Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia, a podcast designed to help caregivers find knowledge, power, hope, and smiles in their dementia caregiving journey. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. Here is your host, best-selling author, Carol Howell. Welcome to Let's Talk Dementia. I'm Carol Howell, your host, and thank you for joining me for another episode. I always want to say something that will either help you bring joy and laughter and fun into your day to make caregiving easier or maybe help you prevent Alzheimer's in your world, and that's what we're talking about today. I want to pick up on the class that I've been taking with Dr. Perlmutter and have learned so much and just anxious to share a lot of it with you. Well, you know, I've been in business for 10 years, and for 10 years I have said to audiences, Alzheimer's, the disease for which there is no cure. We don't know what's causing it. We don't know how to prevent it. Well, that's probably not entirely true anymore, and I'm kind of happy about that. While we don't totally understand what causes Alzheimer's, we don't totally know how to prevent it. There are lots of strides being made in those areas. That's what I want to talk with you about today. There are things that we can do that will reduce our chances of Alzheimer's. Now, we may do all the right things and one day still wind up with Alzheimer's, but we have reduced odds of that greatly. And if that is true, and it is, shouldn't we be doing those things? Well, that's what I'm hoping to encourage in you. I have found great hope in the class that I took and in the information that I've learned in knowing there are things that I can do, changes that I can make that will help reduce the chances of Alzheimer's. It's been said within the next few years that every family will be affected by Alzheimer's. Mine has been. My grandmother, my mama, yeah, that's big effect of Alzheimer's. And if you're watching this, you probably have been or currently are being affected in some way by that nasty disease called Alzheimer's. So if that's the case, we need to know what causes it. And as I've said for years, we've not known what's caused it. But I'll tell you, I have said for many, many years, 15, 20 years, that I believe many of the diseases that we face in this world are caused by what we do to our body or we don't do for our body, what we put in our body or what we don't put in our body, the things that we can control that basically we're just too daggone lazy to do something about. We live in a society where if we can take a pill or get a surgery to fix it, then sign us up. But if we've got to get out and exercise or avoid those foods that are bad for us, then we're like, eh, that don't sound like so much fun. But neither is being sick. Neither is cancer and diabetes and heart disease and Alzheimer's. So you have to weigh it. And I'm telling you, I don't have to work too hard to figure out which way I want that to go. Well, one of the biggest contributing factors to Alzheimer's is inflammation, chronic inflammation. It's also often thought of as hidden inflammation. Well, my husband and I just got back from a nice long walk, and when we started walking, I hadn't intended it to be as long as it was. <laughs> so I didn't have on my Nike walking shoes. I just had on some, some thick soled um, Tom shoes that I wear a lot. But unfortunately, on the way on the walk, I got one blister on one toe and another blister on the toe next to it. Two blisters, same foot. Well, that's inflammation, right? I could very well see some swelling around that area. That's inflammation you can see. So you know, you need to put a Band-Aid on it. Or maybe you've got inflammation on your arm and your leg or your shoulder or your neck and you put ice on it. You do something about it. Well, you don't see inflammation in your brain, girl child. You just don't. But it's there. And what are we going to do about it? Well, inflammation, the Latin word for inflammation means to set on fire. Now, is there anything about that that sounds like something that should be going on in your body? Well, no, it does not. But alas, that's what's happening. The brain inflammation's main mechanism, the main reason that the inflammation is there in the brain is to cause damage. Well, now, inflammation that shows up on your arm will help you know you've got something going on there that you need to work on, but you don't see that in your brain. So we've got to deal with the causes of inflammation. Inflammation causes depression, anxiety, yeah, and get this, reduced brain volume in our older years, in our late years. 
reduced brain volume. The brain is shrinking because of inflammation. Inflammation gives us a link to Alzheimer's, to heart disease, to diabetes. It's crazy. Inflammation is not a good thing. So what are we going to do to reduce inflammation? Well, I've told you several times about a product that I use, my husband and I do, called Infla 650, I-N-F-L-A-650. And um, you can find it at infla-650.com, I believe is the correct website, and order it. It is very, very popular. He has a very hard time keeping it in stock, actually. It has done wonders in reducing the inflammation that we, my husband and I, both experience in our body, brought on by injuries that we have sustained. Mine in my shoulder blade, oh, it just aches sometimes, and it has helped tremendously. And my husband in his neck, he got to the point he could not move his head much more than this. And after two days on Infla 650, he could move his head a lot. I don't make anything by you buying Infla 650. So, you know, you're not going to benefit me if you buy it. But you're going to benefit you. It helps reduce inflammation. But what can we do to not get inflammation? Well, now that's a better plan, isn't it? It's like we don't have to cure Alzheimer's if we don't get Alzheimer's. That's what we want. So we don't want to get inflammation. Well, what I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like, and I've told you this before, and I'm going to tell you this again because it's just that important. You've got to move your body. I mean, make sure you wear the right shoes before you go out. <laughs> I wish I had that part to do again. Do get the good shoes. But get out and move. Walk. If it's cool, put on a coat. Now, if it's icy, stay home and walk in place. You can pull up videos on YouTube. Ms. Leslie Sansone um, is a wonderful um, uh, aerobic specialist who endorsed my book, If My Body is a Temple, Why Am I Eating a Donut? It's available on Amazon. She actually did. And I have I pulled up her videos on oh gosh on my computer and I, but back when you had to buy the DVDs um, yeah had a whole I actually had the, the VHS tapes for the longest time I have done her video so many times that I have them memorized I know what she's gonna say next but when the water when the water when the weather doesn't allow me to get outside I can put that on and I can walk in place right here in my office and you can too all over YouTube if you live in an area that you can go to the pool, get out in the pool and move. And I know you're thinking, I can't walk very far. I have arthritis or I have this issue. If you can get in the water where there's no strain on your muscles, you're going to find out that you can move, that you can do knee lifts and kickbacks, and that you can bring your knees to your chest in the water that you couldn't think about doing on dry land. And it doesn't put pressure on your joints. It's a wonderful thing to do. Move yourself. Your local YMCA probably has a pool. Go join. Yeah, you might have to pay a little bit. But do you know how expensive the medications are for Alzheimer's? The medications that don't help at all? Do you know how expensive radiation and chemo is for cancer? Just get out and move. Quit sending me all your excuses. I don't have time to hear them. But then the other thing we can do is remove from our diet one of the things that is a leading contributor to inflammation, and you're going to hate me for this one, sugar. Oh, my word, sugar is killing us. So if you're thinking, mm, I'm going to fix this and this for supper tonight, and then afterwards we're going to have ice cream, or as my sister has in her freezer, Verona, I'm just saying, that's my little sister's name. Girl, you got to get that stuff out your freezer. She bought it was a cappuccino caramel ice cream. Yes, that's good. I mean, I potentially could eat the entire bucket of it. Good stuff. But you got to weigh that. Which is it that's most important? And you think, well, you deserve a treat every now and again. But I'm going to tell you, if you're buying a half gallon of it, that's more than a treat. Yeah, that's like several treats several days in a row. Just don't bring it in your house. And just don't. You have to look at what do you want, a body, a brain, a mind, a heart, a belly, lungs, kidney, all your apparatuses working as they should, or do you really want that ice cream? And if you really want that ice cream, then don't call me and ask me to help you when you get Alzheimer's, because I'm going to go, where were you when I told you that? <laughs> no, I really won't. I'll still be here for you. But it is what makes me think sometimes, why don't we do the things we know we need to do? 
a question of life, isn't it? Think about it, all right? I'm going to go be cooking dinner here in a little bit, and I'm going to be fixing a pasta that is made 100% from red lentils. Good pasta. It's going to have shrimp in it, not beef, not pork, not chicken. I'm going to have some fish, because girl doesn't eat all that stuff. I'm going to have some good olive oil in it. Olive oil is good for you. Some good herbs and seasonings. God did not make those herbs and seasonings just to make them pretty. They are good for your body. And then some vegetables. I forget which one goes in this recipe, if it's broccoli or what. I love me some broccoli. All right, go and go take care of yourself, you promise? Write me and tell me about it. Carol at Let's Talk Dementia .org. See you next time. Bye-bye. Let's Talk Dementia would like to thank our sponsors, National Association of Veterans and Families. You can reach them at 800-352-2919 on the internet at www.navf.org. They speak veterans so you don't have to. And you tell them Carol sent you when you call to inquire about benefits for the veteran, the spouse of the veteran, or both. Editor Beth. You can find Ms. Beth Crosby at EditorBeth.com. She is amazing at looking at what you've written and making sure it represents you well. Find her at www.EditorBeth.com. And HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. That's York County. 803-985-0985. They are there for the, hun the repair and maintenance of your Honda, Hyundai, Toyota, Kia. Tell them Carol sent you. Thanks for joining us today for Carol Howell's Let's Talk Dementia. To learn more about dementia, we recommend Carol's best-selling book, also titled Let's Talk Dementia. It's available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle versions. Be sure to like Let's Talk Dementia on Facebook and leave us a kind word of review on iTunes. Remember, knowledge brings power. Power brings hope. Hope brings smiles. And we all need more smiles. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll be right here when you come back to Let's Talk Dementia.